Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. How long has it been since I did the first philodendron collection? Quite a while. I won't, I won't lie, it's quite a while. It might have even been before I went on holiday, okay? And this happens, this happens. And I did warn you in the original video, hey, it's gonna come out when it comes out, it's gonna be in bits, this is what it is, this is the tea. So without further ado, we're gonna get straight into it. I want to show you the second part of my philodendron collection. And if you haven't seen the first video, I will leave a link down in the description and you should be able to find it quite easily. So if you wanna see that first, that's fine. You don't really have to see it in any order. You can just watch this one then that one. He's fine. So the next plant in my philodendron collection, technically part two, is this guy. Now, I have different sizes of this guy, but I thought why not just give you the most impressive one because I have a few of him. I might have about eight of these guys. So if you're interested, get in touch. But this is my beautiful philodendron longillobatum and they are absolutely mint, guys. The amount of extra floral nectaries on this plant are insane. I don't know if you can see this. It's, it's a lot, guys. It's a lot. Hopefully you can. I really hope you can. I mean, if I touch it, it's going to get very, very gammy very quickly. However, however, this here is kind of what they grow like. They have the most amazing earlobes. Can you see this? I appreciate it kind of gets in the way when there's loads of leaves together. You can't really make out what's going on. But if I just show you that one there, you should be able to work out how these things grow. I don't really know how popular these are or aren't. Not really sure. I feel like not enough people have them. They do grow really well. The internodal spacing on these plants, as hopefully you can see, hopefully you can, yeah, sort of, is quite together, together, quite narrow. Is that the word I want to say? It's compact, right? It's compact. So it's really, really nice if you've got a low light situation. Essentially, if the plant gets leggy, it's just going to start looking like more of a regular climber. And I have actually done a video all about this and low light plants and what you should pick, do's and don'ts. So I will leave that in the description if you are interested. But this guy is literally my pride and joy. What a gorgeous plant. And they really do grow quite impressively. Obviously, you'd need a pole for it if you want. He's just looking really well. He's just living his best life. He's looking so nice and healthy. Absolutely looking his best, which actually brings me quite nicely onto the sponsor of today's video, which is Athletic Greens. Hey guys, I want to share with you something that has been an absolute game changer for my overall health and wellness, and that is AG1. AG1 is a daily nutritional mix made up of 75 high quality whole food sourced ingredients that you enjoy in the form of a delicious pineapple and vanilla drink. I often get a bit lazy and at times a little lost when it comes to keeping track of all my multivitamins, minerals, probiotics, etc. I tend to run out of one thing before another and I can't always find what I need when I need it, which means I am extremely inconsistent when it comes to taking supplements. With AG1, I've already saved time and money by combining everything I need into one product. And since switching to AG1, I've been able to consistently give my body the probiotics it needs. As you can see, I like to waste a lot of time in the morning with my two little boys. So it's a good time to sit down and just take a minute for myself, play with the kittens and just start my day right. If you want to try AG1 for yourself, go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to get started on your first purchase. And you can receive a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five travel packs. The link is in the description, guys. Thank you so much to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. And let's get back to it. So yeah, he's just looking really healthy. He's looking really sleek. He's looking sexy and they are brilliant. They just get better and better and better with age. And I'll just show you that again. Oh, he's just so cool, isn't he? He's really unique. He's one of my favorites. I'm going to put him down because he's actually quite heavy. Right, so this guy here, he is a mint. He does need chopping because he has sort of reverted, as you can see. So he will need a little choppity chop because he should look like this. But he is just here to represent Philodendron Burley Marks. Right, I have this. Obviously, needless to say, I have the all green version if I just chopped that. I have the mint version, which is very, very nice. And you can't see it, but in the corner over there, I have the most unruly selection of just variegata, so the yellow variegation. I would pick them up, but I literally wouldn't be able to separate them. I need to go through and chop them and 
to propagate them, to be honest. But yeah, this guy needs cut as well. He's actually roundabout ready to. And this is the thing about Burley Marks. If you buy one of these, whether it's green, yellow variegation, the mint, you really get the bang for your buck because they just keep going and going. And I won't talk about this plant too much because I do all the time. Essentially, I think it's a really, really great beginner's philodendron. I think it's fantastic because it's easy to propagate. You can't really kill it. it grows quick, blah, 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 blah. But if I just show you this here, you should see where we're at with it, which admittedly, we're in a pretty good place there. Pretty good place to propagate. Just so easy, so easy. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's green, mint, yellow. It's it's all the same thing. I find the care the same, by the way, if anybody's curious. Between the mint, because they are a bit more pricey, if you want to spend the money on one, care is the same. Literally the same. Look, it's had nothing but neglect and it's growing. Albeit green. Okay, I take your point but it's grown beautifully. Next up, we have a plant that is just one of my favorites ever, one of my favorites ever. I think I've mentioned it recently as well in a low light video because it's really good and it sizes up quite nicely. And that is this little guy. This guy is propagation, but it just goes to show you actually how they grow. So this is really, really good for that. And I should have had that in that video, but I filmed it at home, so we didn't have it. As you can see here, this is Philodendron Glorious and it has been chopped like so. Hopefully it will focus on me. But if you look at the internodal spacing here, look how it decides to grow. It really doesn't mess around and it can grow very, very, very tight or it can grow very leggy. No matter what happens, I do find that this plant sizes up well. This is the size of the leaf that I cut it from. I'll just show you next to my head. Very, very beautiful. And then we have the propagations that are, of course, smaller, but generally speaking, they're a very, very nice size to start. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. They come in this beautiful sort of bronzy color here, like so. Really hard to show you this because it's so floppy, I don't want to hurt it. But they come in a little bit like that, so you get this bronzy color. This plant here is a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melanochrysum. Now, I think you saw a Philodendron Gloriosum in my last video. Philodendron Melanochrysum, I couldn't even pull it off the shelf because it's like this weird big tangled vine. But just know that if you want an easy climbing philodendron that's heart-shaped, this is brilliant. Honestly, this is absolutely fantastic. I frequently take propagations very, very lazily. I plop them in lacquer. I forget about them. I come back and we have this. We have this. Two beautiful leaves. Nice and plump. No problems. What more could you want? How nice is that? That's gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, so nice. So this is philodendron. Glorious. Next up, yet another plant that has admittedly been chopped at a little bit, and that is the philodendron. I think it's just Corsinianum, I do believe. This doesn't look like much, and this is just one of these things where I just have to insert a photograph. So I'll likely insert it over myself now. Essentially, this plant grows and it sort of droops at the edges and it's got really, I think the professional term is actually undulating, but it's got a very wavy leaf margin and it sort of just sits up like an umbrella really and it sort of drops down. It's the weirdest thing ever. And it is acquired taste, it's not for everybody. But if I just show you this little guy, because he is younger, you get a sense of potentially what it might do. Like you can sort of see here that it's doing what I probably just showed you in the photograph. Not a lot though, like that's looking pretty normal. This has been cut several times, by the way, if you're wondering. This is the new leaf here. I know it doesn't look like much, but honestly it is nice. The underside's absolutely gorgeous. That, mm -hmm, really nice. These are, if you couldn't tell from the photograph, these are grown quite large. You don't have to, but obviously if you don't, you get more of this sort of vibe. That is mine. There are other versions of them in the shop. There used to be one down there. Don't know where it is now. Don't know where it is, but this guy's grown really nicely and he does need propagated again, which can be done, actually. It definitely could. I could take off these top two leaves here. I just want to let you know how nice this plant is. It is not a talked about philodendron. So if you haven't heard of it or you haven't really seen it, it's not a sexy mainstream philodendron. It's just one that people collect. I really like it and I think more people should because look at this. This is lovely. Look at that. Ooh, that's really, really nice. An acquired taste. But definitely, definitely, I have a soft spot for it, 100%. This is this Philodendron Corsinianum. You can't really have a Philodendron video without one of these guys. This is one of my favorite Philodendrons ever. And I, I honestly wish I could have one in my house because I just think they're great. They're just wonderful, especially when they get big. This is your bog standard, very typical Philodendron Bilitae. And the cool thing about this plant, in my opinion, is definitely the petioles because as you should be able to see, they are gorgeous and orange. You get these wonderful arrow-shaped leaves like 
this and they're very very leathery and glossy so it's a very tough plant to be honest very tough plant i used to think they propagate really well but i'm now a bit more hit and miss actually once they've settled root wise they will they'll probably not die they'll just grow and grow and grow it's just such a sexy plant this one has sized down a little bit so he probably needs some love some feed some whatever because i haven't really fed anything over winter to be honest very very shortly they will all be getting fed and they will hopefully look a lot sexier so really you're buying one of these if you don't mind a climber the internal spacing is extremely slim and it's extremely tight should we say i don't know if you can tell hopefully you can it is and i mean extremely close if you want one of these honestly i do recommend them i can't really say anything bad about them i haven't had my own in a while i just have what's the shop i haven't fallen out of love with them at all i absolutely adore them but this is my gorgeous beautiful philodendron bilitae and it don't matter that it's not very good it's still beautiful off the back of that i want to show you this because it's only right that i show you this after i've just shown you the bilitae i think oh my goodness what is this is this philodendron bilitae crossed with is it philodendron hercules or something it was like a big strong robust name it wasn't goliath i, I want to say it's hercules i could be wrong i could be wrong if i am wrong just feel free to correct me in the comments but basically it's a hybrid that i don't really see anybody talking about not, not a bad thing of course just it's not something people care about i totally get why for me personally i think i'd prefer the bilitae but if you don't like how long the bilitae stems are and you want something a little bit more demure you could say then this guy would be your bet. You can see that the leaves are fatter. We do have a bit of like rhubarb vibes going on, but it's nothing like what the Biltai was. The Biltai was like, pow, orange. This is not so much, but he's still a nice boy. I mean, I've definitely got some growth. I've got some roots coming out of the pot there, which is nice. So we'll see how he does. I don't believe anybody's going to be particularly interested in him. Bless him. Bless him. Because honestly, guys, in my opinion, I think you just get little time. Unless you really want to collect and you, you love this sort of thing, which is absolutely acceptable. I can't see him breaking any hearts. Do you know what I mean? He is cute. He's definitely easy to grow because I haven't had a single problem with him since I brought him in. He's, he's just the same as when I brought him in. So he's definitely, definitely tough. So if you're looking for something tough that's a bit stumpier, then feel free. I think as well, it's just as short on the internodal spacing as the Biltai as well. So it is a candidate if you want something a little bit shorter and fatter and a bit less, you know, long than a Biltai. But there he is. I'm pretty sure it is Philodendron Biltai crossed with Philodendron Hercules. And I hope I'm right. This next plant I want to show you super quick. It is actually, I, I did feature it in the first philodendron, but I just want to show you because it's really cute and I keep walking past it and I find it really sweet and I have like a whole tray of these. So I just wanted to show you it. It has been mentioned before, but I think at the time I used a photograph because I didn't want to pull from where my big long plant was. This here, this here is that plant cut up actually, funny enough, but this is philodendron Florida ghost and look at how cute this plant is. And I wanted to show you in person because honestly, this is your sign. This is your sign to get a ghost if you weren't sure. These things are beautiful. And you know what? Not every house plant looks good when it's young, right? Especially in the philodendron category. Same as Monstera, really. Monstera are terrible for it. A lot of philodendron don't look great young. They just don't. They just look like bleh, like something of nothing, right? These look fantastic. They look so cute at every turn. This is a very, very, very young leaf right here. And look at how adorable he looks. What more could you want, if not that? Got beautiful red stem as well. Not as red, to be honest, though I've definitely got ones with redder stems. I keep saying stems, you know what I mean? Petiole, I've had a week off, just, it is what it is. But red petioles, like so, that's what it looks like on the back. I mean, how nice is that? I realize we are getting blown out, which is extremely unfortunate. Just want to show him really quickly, because he is cute. But that is Philodendron Florida Ghost, and we've definitely talked about him before. Tis the season. So the next plant I want to show you in my philodendron collection part two is, oh my goodness, this plant has had a wild ride. Now, I've, I've had mixed opinions about this plant, to be honest. I do like the plant. I just, the price was kind of insanity, like literally insanity. And then you had a lot of scammers around and just, it just kind of sours, sours your opinion of plants sometimes, I think, when there's been a lot of like controversy around it or whatever. You just get soured by it, don't you? But I love this plant. And has it done well? <laughs> It's done okay, to be honest. I can't remember how many leaves I had when I got it. But anyway, I want to show you this guy. This guy was supposed to be cut. He hasn't been. He hasn't been. I think both me and Ben have just forgotten to cut it. But this here is my philodendron caramel marble. And this is what he looks like when he is large. So if I show you this a little bit more up close, it is going to focus on me. That is very unfortunate. This seems to be just a little bit of acclimation damage. But honestly, that's the only damage I've had from the plant. 
this plant is tough as nails and it's a lot more of a climber than what you'd think it is. I thought this plant grew a little bit more, I just want to say a little bit more compact, but it kind of doesn't. It is more wider on the internodal spacing, as you can probably tell, it's going all of my soft boxes, but that's what it looks like there when it grows. It's a lovely plant, don't get me wrong, I do have a new leaf coming and I hope that it's not stuck. But yes, new leaf coming through, can't tell how it looks, to be quite honest, not entirely sure. This one has a reasonable amount of variegation on, so I'm hopeful enough. We'll see how it goes. It's the same as since I brought it in. And that's really nice to see when it's a high value plant, is it not? So I'm quite happy about this, to be honest. I'm very, very happy. This is all you need. So yeah, Philodendron Caramel Marble. Not the highest variegation specimen you've ever seen. Part of the reason why I actually have it, because I've got a good deal on it. You can get a lot of people scamming you for these though, so do be careful. By that, I just mean people sell them and they're all green and they'll tell you it's variegated. and It's it's not. It's just a regular sawtooth philodendron, I think. I mean, sawtooth philodendron, you could call all of them that, but if you get sold an all green one and you're told that it's going to variegate, it, it's probably not, so don't do that. Buy something that eats variegated. This next guy could do with a little bit of support. I won't lie, he's grown, he's grown well, don't get me wrong, but I'm sort of supporting him with my finger. This guy could look a lot better than what he does, right? But I promise you, these are amazing. And if you can get your hands on them, you, you seriously need to. You need to Google it, you need to do all the things, right? This here is Philodendron Orange Marmalade, and it has been sort of neglected in a dark spot. It does need a feed. You know, it sized up at one point, it has got smaller again. It could be cut, but I think when you propagate these, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. If you look here, when you propagate them, you are probably going to have to sacrifice a leaf and remove that whole petiole in order to be able to get to the node to cut it. I just think that's what it is. So if you're going to propagate these, not the best time you could have. However, if you actually look after them and you get them good, they come in amazing. I might have a picture of how beautiful and red the leaves come in because honestly, it's insane. Now I have this one and I have a large one and essentially that's all I have in the shop. I used to have a lot more smalls. I think I sold a lot of them in 2020 and I just kept two back, but it's kind of like a philodendron Prince of Orange on steroids, quite honestly. If you want something that gets more ready orange, then this is your boy. Don't be put off by the fact it's a climber because look at how bushy that is. And I tell you now, guys, that's had neglect. That has had some neglect. And look how bushy it's grown. Now, it won't stay red. It will sort of fade down to green. There is still some tone on the green leaves. I don't think you're going to see it on camera. I will try and show it to you. Hopefully you can see this. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. But they're not fully... Come on. They're not fully green. There is still a bit of um, mottling, you could say. Not quite mottling, but basically this effect here that you see on this leaf is actually still present on the green leaves. But it's a lovely, lovely plant. I just think it'd be difficult to propagate. But if you actually have one of these and it's absolutely beautiful and glorious, could you tag me in it on Instagram? Because I would love to see one of these in their, in their full glory because I have a really large one over there that I'm not going to pick up. And it's definitely had its moments, right? It's definitely had its moments. But I would love to see one in its full glory. So if you've got one, please tag me in it on Instagram. I genuinely want to see it. Philodendron orange marmalade. Do not be fooled. These are absolutely tremendous plants. And I don't think they cost the earth either. I think they might be reasonably affordable. Okay, this guy, he is not really indicative of how beautiful this plant can look. And I'll insert a picture in a moment. But this here... <laughs> He, I mean, he's, he's got two growing points, right? He is leggy, but he kind of should be that this is who he is. I'll explain in a moment. But he's very lime greeny. I don't know if you can tell. He's definitely paler than what he actually should be. New leaf, new leaf who this? I can't work out who the new ones are. He might be new. I'm not sure. I mean, does it look all right? It looks okay. It looks okay, but really it could do with a little bit of feed, I think. This is underfed. It does need propagated, as I say. This here is Philodendron McDowell. Dean McDowell, I should say. It's essentially a hybrid of Philodendron Pastazanum and Philodendron Gloriosum. The toughness definitely comes from the Gloriosum and the sizing up and everything else, all the, the cool things about the plant. I hate to say it, but all the bad things about the plant, in my opinion, come from the Pastazanum. I'm not a huge fan of Philodendron Pastazanum. I've had it in on and off, but the thing I don't like is this. So I talk about this all the time in different plants, but basically the ratio you get between the node to the leaf, so the, the length of the petiole in relation to the size of the leaf, it's never great. 
it's never great, guys. And I'm not saying that this couldn't improve, right? But generally speaking, the pastazarnum, which is obviously one of the parents of these, the petioles are very long. So the petiole to leaf ratio, it's not excellent. And this plant has inherited that. That said, these don't die. They are so, so tough. They will do well in low light, but given the nature of a pastazarnum, I probably wouldn't do it, guys. I probably would urge towards something else. So it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. I think I'd just probably advise against it if you were in like a low light situation where you're like, hmm, all of my plants look a bit leggy. Don't do it. Honestly, get a Gloriosum, you'd be so much happier. Well, looky here, if this isn't also one of my favorite crawlers. I can't remember if I've done a crawler video on my favorites, but if I haven't, I need to, because this guy would be on it. This is Philodendron Plowmanii. Now, there are different types of Plowmanii, sort of, right? There is a Plowmanii, and I do have one at the very back wall. It's, it's in my living wall, actually, growing, and it has no silver on it. This one does. That's the difference I'm prepared to tell you about anyway. I'm not fully clued up on the other differences. I think there might be less red as well. I can't see any red on the other one really. Let me just show you this one. It's not the most perfect specimen, but it's okay. It's sort of been sat underneath a few plants, so it hasn't really had the light that it should have. These could be a lot shorter. The leaves could be a lot bigger and plumper. It doesn't look brilliant. I'm not going to sit here and say it looks fantastic, but it certainly doesn't look the worst, right? At all. I think that's a pass. It's all right. You know what I mean? It's literally so much stuff has grown over it in front of the wall. It just hasn't had a look in, but still one of my favorites. I just love crawlers. I just love crawlers. And you know what? I think crawlers love me generally. Some of my nicest plants I have are crawlers. So there he is. Fill it in plowmany eye. I'll just turn around briefly. Hopefully it will focus on the plant and not myself. But if I just try and show you that, just a stunning, stunning plant. Stunning, stunning plant. Love them. If you can get your hands on one, I don't really think you'll regret it. And I think that about does it for part two of my philodendron collection because we are getting there, guys. I've done a lot of stuff recently. There's loads of boxes down on the floor and I need to get a part three for you because I can see already there's plants here that I have not picked up yet. I can see beautiful philodendron luxuriants over there. Jose Bono. There's a few things kicking about and it's just finding them. But thank you very much for watching part two. I really hope you enjoyed it. Another special thank you to our sponsor for today's video, which is Athletic Greens. Please remember that the link for that is in the description for a fantastic special offer and if you like this video please leave a like down below it lets me know that you enjoy my content and i should make more of it if you'd like to subscribe then please feel free to do that as well the link is down below similarly i do have a join option which is for memberships you get access to a few different options some of them include early access to my videos each week so if that's something you're interested in again the link is in the description i will love you and leave you guys thank you very much for having me today i hope you have a fantastic weekend and i will see you in the next one bye guys